in the previous lesson, Stromanera and Stromanerica precept are a, a preparatory course for monastic people who have recently left the home life and do not yet have the full monastic qualification. So we can call it as a part-timer. Uh, then uh, we talk about uh, uh, the meaning of the Stramanera is mean, means the diligently seeking for liberation from birth and death. Okay, and we go to the details uh, for the for the ten precept, and we do comparison uh, between uh, the eight precept and the ten precept. Obviously, in the Stramanera and Stramaneriki precept, okay, the obvious difference with the five precept is number third, no sexual relationship. Number six, no use of a perfume, garland, personal adornment. Then number eight, no use of a luxury, high seats or the bed. Okay, uh, so that the meaning. Uh, I mean, uh, that's what uh, uh, previously. Huh? Okay, uh, uh, the text will go further regards the eight precept. Okay, so Mr. Leung, can you please read through it after leaving home? After leaving home and having received these 10 precepts, one can then be a Samanera or Samanarika. Hmm. These are monastic precepts, so one has to completely refrain from sex. The six, seven, and eight precepts are for maintaining a simple life with contentment and firm labor. The monastic life established by the Buddha rests on the principle of with only the basic needs. The monastic community clothing, food, lodging, and medicine, the four requisites, should all come from begging. To avoid giving rise to desire, Clothing or food should be served are uh, safe, and certainly gold, silver, and treasures cannot be accepted. Because monks beg for alms, they keep the precepts for of not eating after noon. The last two precepts, along with the precepts of no sexual relations, reveal a specific characteristics of monastics in the Buddhist system. Abandonment of the marital relationship and of the economy of private ownership. In China, although the monks live by collecting arms, they actually have adopted methods of economic self management. They cook their own food. So, wonder that few keep the precept of not eating in all times manage their own wealth and build their own homes, houses. By collecting rent on their properties, negotiating prices for performing ceremonies, and so forth, they come even further from the original meaning of monastic life. Even the good monks in China usually keep only the fundamental precepts rigor uh, rigorously. Strictly speaking, Chinese bhikkhus may not be on par with the Samaneras. Okay, so we digest uh, these two paragraphs in the first place.
Okay, uh, Sally, are you finished, Sally? Huh? I cannot see. <laughs> uh, you cannot see, yes, okay. Come up once you finish, uh, Sally. Huh? Okay. 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 Okay, yes. Uh, class, basically, for these two paragraphs, it is more for more or less uh, for internal affair. Uh, huh? So in the uh, internal affair, I mean uh, is the is the affair within our Sangha community. Okay, huh? uh, well, I think the author is quite straightforward. Okay, huh? he's speaking some truth. Uh, huh? And uh, from the truth, uh, what the author speaking, you can see, I mean the real life, uh, you see, especially in Mahayana, more or less the same uh, like what the author mentioned. Uh, Okay, basically, huh, as what I say, uh, now uh, there's a new group uh, huh, of a Bhikkhu, I mean in Mahayana, they, they start to observe a more a stricter precept. Uh, huh. uh, they try to be better. Huh. They try to change the environment. Huh. Okay, huh. Well, uh, remember, I, I told you before, you see how, uh, in the, uh, okay, uh, basically there's a two type, uh, I mean, the, there's a two attitude uh, in observing the precept. Okay, one is the, traditional and the orthodox way, okay? And then the second one is the more open way. Huh? Basically, all the Theravada and, and, and basically all the conservative school, uh, they will be more conservative, they will follow all the precepts, uh, basically no matter major or the minor. And the open mind one, they will uh, do a little bit change according to the environment. And basically the most basic one, they cannot let go but the minor, they will do some, I mean, uh, some adaptation, uh, they will do some, some change. Uh. So I think maybe for Sally and Irena, okay, what, I mean, uh, the Buddhism, you, you see more, more, uh, more on the second type. For Mr. Leung, I think Mr. Leung exposed to both of them, uh, uh, exposed to both of them, and also can see the pros and cons for both of it. Okay, uh. okay basically, I have to admit that uh, 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 the basic rules, we have to follow the basic rule is quite similar with all the layman five precepts. Okay. Uh, actually, in our our precept, we have five categories. Huh? Uh, the first category is the most serious one. Then, then there's a second category. Second category, if you commit, you have to, it will be very troublesome. You have to ask 20 monks to present in order for purification. So these two this two set of the uh, category one and two is considered the most serious and basically all the people who follow, okay? No matter open open school or the conservative school. Uh, but for the group number third, fourth and fifth, is which is considered the minor rule, if for the very uh, conservative school, they will follow all the minor rule, but for the opening school, uh, they might not be followed. It depends on their Sangha community to decide whether they want to follow or not. Okay, the last three category includes holding the money, uh, eat after the known time, all this stuff, all this type of stuff. Uh, and uh, this is how I think what Elena and Sally uh, once you goes around to see Mahayana Mang, no matter you go to Fo Kwang San or you or you see from me, okay, you notice that we handle the money ourselves and we cook ourselves, uh, like what the text mentioned. Uh, but basically, uh, uh, like uh, Mr. Leung also will notice. Uh, even in Terawada, if they are the open mind, and in, if they stay in the city, usually the lifestyle is not as strict as in the forest. Okay, huh? So one thing we have to believe that uh, the original rule is laid down with the background that there is a jungle or an agricultural area. Huh? So basically, uh, if you want to practice uh, uh, not having after the not having uh, not having anything after the not eating in the uh, in the improper time and don't want to hold any money, well, uh, that is very conducive. If let's say the Sangha community is established in the agricultural country and also in the jungle, for them more e very easy to do all the things. Huh? But if let's say the environment shift, for example, in China, uh, once the uh, Buddhism uh, moved to the China, the first challenge is the cultural shock, okay? Basically, uh, uh, arms row, uh, they think you are the you are the beggar, okay? And secondly, in the Chinese Buddhism, uh, finally, uh, uh, most of the, I mean, uh, the Zen Buddhism, they build their temple on their own and, and they go to the very isolated area. And they can hardly to get the food from the uh, devotees. 
So that's the reason why they have to be a farmer by themselves. Uh, once they become a farmer by themselves, they will start uh, to have to cook by themselves and they start to handle money by themselves. Okay, huh? Well, uh, I mean, uh, how, how far you want to go uh, huh, for these rules, uh, it really depends on individual. Uh, huh? Okay, it, it really depends on individual. Huh? Uh, but uh, as the way we see, huh, if let's say you really want a charity organization, you, your temple play roles in charity organization, like you run an old folk house, uh, kidney dialysis, all this, if you don't have a fixed income, if you don't, uh, or if you don't have a, uh, I mean, if you don't, maybe if you don't have a stable income, you, it is hardly for you to run this type of organization. Uh, basically, uh, a monk in Bofa running all the organization in Mahayana. But in Theravada, some they prefer run uh, the, uh, uh, the charity organization, but they appoint the layman as a committee member. We need to say that the obligation to collect the fund, all this, they let the layman to bear over it. Okay, so the layman, uh, uh, have, I mean, I have to take the responsibility so that uh, let the thing run properly. Whereas in Mahayana Mang, they prefer to bear everything. Then they run all the organization. That's what you see, la. I mean, uh, now in KL, la, huh? uh, like Tiratana, they also run off orphanage house, uh, but also uh, Mahayana temple also run off Ofok house, uh, like, um, like PJ Old Tower, huh? they run the rehabilitation center. Once uh, the temple have to bear everything, they have to keep on running the Fahui. But if let's say the financial planner behind is educated, they will prefer maybe to buy the shop lot and rent it out in order to get a stable income uh, to support, uh, I mean, uh, the charity organization. So this is something uh, happening here. Uh, basically, uh, the orthodox school, they used to command uh, to the open school. They always say, oh, why you don't hold the precept? Uh, but, but they never realized that uh, uh, once they involve in charity work, they have to be like that. You see what I mean? They have to be like that. They have to be like that. So meaning to say that, uh, like what the author mentioned just now, huh, he is more on the orthodox ways huh, to see the world, you see. Oh, if let's say you see the world like this, uh, I think a lot of Mahayana have to be out already. You, you, you can't endure them already because uh, we are in this type of, I mean, uh, the environment to survive, you see, to help the society at the same time. Uh, this is something uh, I, I have to let you know. Huh. But basically uh, now, uh, it's a monk like me uh, in my Asia, okay. Uh, I mean, uh, especially graduate from the school, uh, the uh, Buddhism institution. Basically, we are in the middle way, uh, okay. Like for my temple, I don't do fa hui, so I, I want to avoid uh, too much money also. Usually, fa hui, uh, you can get much money compared you just uh, get the offering only, okay. But I will try to avoid because I don't want to have too much money because when too much money, uh, you have to handle it. In, according to the Dharma, huh? it's not that easy. You know? uh, so uh, that's why I try to avoid. Okay, but, but I have to open the class. Huh? Uh, since uh, Pindapa is opening the, the class is the same if for Dharma propagation. Uh, if you don't go to Pindapa, you, you gain no food. And I don't I open the class, uh, no offering, I can't buy the food also at the same time. Uh, and here, I accept the money, I handle money myself, but also I accept the offering from the layman at the same time okay huh? uh, but anyway i use a modern way i buy the insurance i let insurance support me uh, this is more realistic uh, but some uh, but, uh, but but if uh, but uh, for the more conservative mind uh, they can hardly understand why you go to buy insurance you should be rely on the triple gem uh, whatever happened don't think too much they have you this is the mindset uh, or this is the mindset Oh, but they don't they, but they don't know uh, I mean for the past two operations I spent 40k already. If I don't use if I don't plan according to insurance, uh, who will support me the 40k? Am I right? Uh, so I mean um, uh, this is a very uh, this is very controversial issue. When we when we discuss a lot of things will be have to be taken into consideration. But anyway, you don't go to ask the monk to challenge the way they hold the precept. Because uh, if let's say they're like us, uh, we, we spend one and a half year to study the precept each one by one in detail. So after starting the precept, we have to think uh, how to make it practical in KL. Uh, this is another edit part, you know. Uh, sometimes I change the system from here to there, from there to here, just because uh, I want to be more, uh, more, uh, more. Uh, I, I, I try to be strictly adherent to the Vinaya, but not practical. 
So finally, I have to go back uh, to the more normal way, mandate way, as you see now, uh, we handle money by ourselves. Uh, okay. But anyway, one thing is, um, I have already made a view that uh, uh, once I die, all the assets will be liquidated and all the money will go back to the Sangha community. I wrote, I wrote the view so that uh, our family member, uh, they will have a court case uh, uh, to, to fight the asset uh, uh, with, the, uh, uh, with the temple. So we'll be very careful also avoid all this type of thing once we handle the money. Because according to the, the view, uh, all the assets will go back to my relative. But this is not proper according to the Dharma. Uh, whatever money I get should be go back to the temple. That will be the right thing. Uh, so you see, we have to consider a lot of things uh, in order to, to establish the system uh, uh, for, for a temple in the modern day. Okay. Is there any question? I talked a lot already. Uh, maybe you also have some curiosity, no harm, I can tell you, but you don't go to ask the monk like this uh, because it's sometimes like, something like challenging, you know, the way they put like, uh, just now the text, uh, they just like challenging only, not good, not good. Uh, let me tell you, we are close, we are very close, so I can tell you uh, why I do like this. Okay, what is exactly uh, in the Vinaya and what is the adjustment I have done, I can frankly tell you all. Uh, not all the monk uh, will open talk like that. Yeah, any question you would like to know? question okay huh? uh, okay huh? so just okay huh? okay so anyway up to you huh? uh, if you've got any question you can just ask uh, I just tell you uh, what's happening uh, okay yeah mr. maybe mr. Long want to say something I uh, on the mic for you yes nothing okay huh? nothing. actually uh, it depends because uh, uh, those monks stay in the uh, city and all the monk city uh, in the uh, suburban areas are different environment yep. now because of a uh, developing uh, situation economic situation being the modern monks and nuns need to survive so they need to maybe divert slightly a bit from the original vinaya uh, yeah to sustain uh, yeah yeah you repeat what i say la, ho, in a in a proper english way la, ho, <laughs> with the more more good English uh, presentation, uh, okay? Uh, well, this is uh, what, uh, what what we try to do. But anyway, uh, we will always try our best uh, to keep the person as best as good as possible, uh, Because uh, once people keep on command, uh, we also have to reflect. Uh, I mean, I mean, uh, this is uh, this is essential also for us. Uh, always, always reveal ourselves uh, for better for the betterment of the Buddhism, uh, Okay, uh, what else? Uh, we should not be too obvious, uh, no? Uh, not too and uh, not too chong and a bit and which is yeah uh, for example if let's say uh, you use a luxury car uh, something like that uh, you wear a luxury watch that will be too obvious uh. but uh but, but actually according to the vinaya uh, no matter open or the uh or the orthodox one uh, as long as uh, the i mean uh, the full requisite is offered by the layman uh, we can use we, we can make use of it uh, even though there is a golden set uh, or maybe a gold car uh, but the problem is uh, you have to always put a logo upstairs say oh this is offered by somebody uh, because some uh, people will start to gossip you know they say wow how come the monk uh, will uh, uh, I mean, uh, 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 drive a Rolls Royce uh, uh, Mercedes and, uh, and, and have a, what, uh, a good watch uh, uh, people will start gossip what uh, usually uh, People can hardly understand that, oh, it is offered by somebody. So since it will create controversy issue, better we keep it simple. Uh, the car, the watch, all this, you just keep it simple then to avoid people gossip. Uh, because we want to, uh, I mean, uh, we want to maintain the confidence uh, of the, from the society. Uh, so that is the thing. Uh, mm. Okay, let's, let's take a look next. Uh, Okay, let's uh, see what do I, yeah, you see, take a look, uh, economy cell management, they cook their own food. Yes, uh, we are running the economy cell management. Uh, uh, we manage our own wealth, uh, build our own house. Yes, uh, this is what are we doing now? Uh, uh, basically, uh, uh, in China, this, uh, uh, the Chinese monk, uh, uh, especially the Zen school, uh, they already established their own roles which is more adaptable to the Chinese culture in the ancient time. Uh, and they just set aside uh, the Vinaya, which is uh, 
I mean, uh, the, the 2,000 years ago in Naya, they set aside, but they established the new one, uh, which, uh, uh, which is more practical according to the that society. La. I think it's about Tang Dynasty. La. They already start already. Tang Dynasty, Tang Dynasty is about 1,600 years from now. Or they notice, oh, it is not that practical already. So they hand the money, everything by themselves. But sometimes, uh, you know, not. actually, uh, I believe that uh, they, they are some, uh, they were some professionals uh, for being monk. Why? Because uh, the way we see it, they run the money uh, so effective. And uh, during the, uh, some, I mean, uh, uh, during some monk, I mean, uh, 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 how, how should I put it? Uh? Is that uh, some monastic, a monastery and monk in certain area of the China, ancient China, they are very rich, uh, and uh, they create the jealousy from the king. So in the history of the Chinese, I mean the Chinese, uh, uh, there's a three king who are famous to do the extinct, I mean uh, to uh, to do the uh, how to say uh, inhalations for the Buddhism. Or they really do it, uh, They go to force all the monks this row. They go to uh, just uh, melt out all the Buddha statue and they burn all the Dharma texts. It happened for three times. Mm. And why does it happen? Uh, partially it's because of the monks so clever in running the asset. Oh, they are getting healthier and more healthier and maybe more healthier. Oh, because I think I suspect they are all professional. Maybe before monks, uh, they are very educated, they are very smart. Once they become monks, uh, they know how to run. Uh, uh, run the land, okay. They rent it out, and they and they get back the money. And when they get back the money, they, they know how to uh, make it uh, uh, run it properly, so that they are too help too wealthy uh, and and create the jealousy among the king. So it happened for three times. Uh. So as you say, you can't make yourself too obvious, especially uh, if the king notice uh, you uh, uh, threatening uh, uh, for being challenged, uh, then you die already. In history, uh, three times uh, the Buddhism almost extinguished uh, in Chinese. Uh, three times. Uh, oh, I don't know. Uh, maybe some passion is, is because uh, uh, too obvious. Uh, uh, I mean, uh, they're, they're, they're too outstanding the way they run the temple. Maybe. Uh, uh, this has happened before. Uh, but anyway, it won't happen in Malaysia. Uh, no worry. Uh, because in Malaysia, uh, we, don't have, uh, we don't have opportunity for being outstanding. No, I don't think in Malaysia, yes. I, I don't think Malaysia. Uh, uh, basically, uh, the Muslim, uh, they are the one who's, who, who, who is the richest. Uh, uh, it wouldn't be, uh, I mean, uh, Buddhism in Malaysia. It's not our, I mean, uh, we don't have an opportunity uh, for being outstanding. Uh. Okay, so this is something about that. Uh. Anyway, uh, if let's say, uh, okay, uh, I believe, uh, uh, some people once they follow uh, the very original rules, uh, very uh, ancient rules, uh, which is laid out by Buddha, they will say that you see, uh, we follow each of the rule. The purpose is to make the Dharma prosperous, uh, meaning to say to make people have confidence and learn the Dharma. Uh. Sometimes they will argue that uh, you see you should follow, you don't you, you you shouldn't hold the money each one by one, uh, so that more people have the confidence. Uh. But basically, I won't see in this way. Uh. You see, for example, in early, huh? okay, I hold the money, all right. I, I, I eat also after the noon time, huh? okay. But you see, uh, I mean, the result, uh, every year we have a graduation ceremony. According to my statistic, I run graduation ceremony for about more than 10 years already for each year. And each time the graduation, uh, the people graduated reached about 100. Uh, there'll be 100 people graduated. And the course I run almost 20 to 30 to 40 courses I will I will run within a year. So we need to say that that is the that is the outcome. Uh, I mean, I, I, this is the outcome and proof that uh, even though I don't follow all the minor uh, the minor rule, but the people still confidence with the Dharma and they come and learn. And I really benefit the society. So sometimes we have to see the outcome. Uh, but the uh, uh, but basically the, the more orthodox people uh, they prefer to see the detail. Uh, they don't really go to see the outcome. We prefer to see the outcome and from the outcome. It will reflect that whether we are in the proper way to run our temple, uh, uh, or whether we, in the, uh, uh, or whether, uh, and from there we, we can reveal the compatibility and suitability for us to run the vinaya. So that's I, what I see it like. Okay. So I think, Mr. Leong, if uh, you you, uh, I mean, are you used to uh, uh, approach 
uh, with the monk in the city, uh, Theravada monk in the city, how is their behavior and perception? It is quite similar with, like me, uh, since we are both in the city. Yeah, Mr. Liu? Uh, in fact, uh, it also depends on the individual, especially when uh, elders, the elders of the Theravadian monks, they follow the Vinaya rules very strictly. Oh, okay. The younger generation are a bit more slack. Okay. You mean even though they stay in city? Even though they are in the city, you mean? Oh, monk, even though they're in the city. Oh, they are freezes again. Oh, they freeze again. Yeah, Sally, make fun over there. Yeah, they freeze already. <laughs> oh, yeah, you come back already. Yeah, you are unfreezed. Okay, please continue. Okay. Because yesterday I was lost. I was lost in Nibana, so I came back already. <laughs> You are not freezing, you are lost in Nibbana. I thought you are freezing. Oh, okay. Oh, well, uh, Mr. Leong, you mean, even though the old, the, the, the senior monk, they stay in city, they still abide by the very orthodox group. Am I right? Yes, right. Yes. Even though in the city, lah, huh? so we need to say it depends on the age and also it depends on where where do you stay, okay, the, lo the location where you stay and also it depends on what activity you involve. Lah. Ah, okay. So this is... Younger generations, they some of them uh, receive uh, take uh, ang paus. I'm sure lah, huh? uh, it, uh, yeah, yeah. Even though Terawadin, you mean they they handle everything by themselves rather than for Kapiya, right? Okay, huh? so we need to say the Terawadin themselves they start to evolving already, right? Uh, they start evolving already. They don't fall. I mean, uh, they have the own way already. Okay, huh? So that is the thing, sir. Huh? Okay, Elena, the way you see the four Kwangsa is more advanced. Uh, it's, it's the more open way, right? Elena, huh? You are eating, are you are you taking dinner? Are you taking lunch? Not lunch, ah? Uh? Ah, uh, yeah. You see, you don't treat people, uh, don't you feel embarrassed? <laughs> Without treating to the people. Ah, <laughs> uh, yeah. Mm, okay, huh? Okay, so, um, well, I think for Sally, uh, maybe Sally will say also, I don't know, I don't ask. So better, I just do my own thing. Like how everything is a privacy. Am I right, Sally? Huh? Uh, on the mic, please. On the mic, on the mic, Sally. Sally, on the mic. Okay, I have also met some uh, Mahayana monks who are following the Vinaya. Yeah, they got they, they, don't got. they don't hold money and they uh, don't eat afternoon uh, yeah the minor rules uh, yeah uh, actually not all the orthodox is in Terawada. Uh, the old one also the orthodox is available in Taiwan and China too yeah yeah you can get you can see both uh, uh, group uh, got, uh, see both. Uh, yeah, yeah. but anyway I think uh, it is good uh, if you got opportunity you can try uh, I mean uh, to uh, to learn uh, from this center, uh, maybe you can learn, uh, get some advantages uh, for this type of orthodox monk because uh, they will uphold us some ancient value, you know, uh, which uh, we have given up, okay, uh, because uh, we want to evolve. Uh, but uh, so, I mean, there's an advantage uh, for upholding the, the ancient value. Sometimes there is. So, uh, since uh, Malaysia, every you all are so free free to go anywhere, so you can try uh, to approach them and uh, see how is their uh, advantages uh, by this way, uh, running in this way. Huh? Okay, uh -huh. okay, so next paragraph. Okay, so we let Sally read through it. Uh, huh? The third and the fourth group. Uh, huh? The third and fourth groups, the Bishus and Bishuni precepts, are for those who live completely away from evil and sensuous conduct. Monks and nuns who form the principal body of the Sangha. The Bishu, the word means mendicant, is a practitioner who lives by begging for alms. The female is called a Bishuni. As regard to their content, the Bishu and Bishunu precepts are, e are equally complete. But because of social relationship and different emotional strengths, the Buddha established separate Bishu and Bishuni precepts. In all, there are 250 precepts for Bishus and 500 precepts for Bishunis. <clears throat> this number is only approximate. In fact, the Bishu precepts, which are much stricter than the Bishu precepts, 
The Pishinu precepts are much stricter than the Pishu precepts. Number about 340. In the fully developed system of Sangha, after leaving home, one has to, has to receive the Samanara or Samaranita's precepts first. Then, receive the Bishu or Bishinu precepts. The origins system established by Buddha was intended to admit those adults who on their own free will take refuge in the three treasures and voluntarily vow to leave home. The Buddha say to such person, such persons, welcome Bishu, quickly practice pure conduct in my Dharma. Thereby, they would consider to have received the Bishu precept and become Bishus. Originally, they are not required to have the rank of Samanara, let alone receive the Samanara precepts. Later, for the sake of the orphan children of his deceased disciples, Buddha compassionately allowed those older than seven to become Samanaras, Samanaritas, and receive Samanara precepts. When these, when these children reached the age of 20, they could receive the Bishu precepts. Ever since the Buddha permitted this, there has been a preparatory rank prior to that of the Bishu Bishuni. Those who give up lay life when older than 20 or those who give up lay life without the complete causes and conditions and therefore did not receive the Bishu precepts are also called old Samanaras. Nevertheless, the Sankha system, it, if one gives up lay life at the age of 20 or later, Although one directly receives the Bishu precepts without having received the Samanara precept, one still attains the precepts that accord with the Buddha original intention. From the perspective of a completely developed system of the Sangha, however, this is not ideal. Okay, thank you so much. We try to digest this three paragraph. Please, Elena, if you finish. Uh.
Elena, thumb up once it's finished. Uh. Okay. okay. Before we continue, uh, Mr. Leung, I would like to ask you a question that uh, you mentioned that uh, uh, the, the junior Terawadi Mang, they possess money by their own. Uh, you mean the senior know this? Uh, yes, uh, actually they don't, uh, they, they receive, let's for example, if they give some Dharma talks, uh, we lay people uh, uh, contribute or donate, they receive, that's all like that only. I see, I see. You need to say that the, the senior know the junior accept the money and handle by themselves, they know all this law. Okay, how about the pin? Uh, what? I don't know whether after that they will, they will what you call, collect the money and then donate it back, uh, to the temple or not, I don't know. <coughs> Okay, never mind. I understand. Okay, how? Uh, how about the pindabat? Do they have a pindabat or not? Yes, they have in a pindabat, especially after the no worship program at the, at the last day. No, no, no. Every day, I mean. Do they pindabat every day? day? No, no, no. No, no, no. Uh, you've been monk uh, in Tiratana? Tiratana, I'm not sure, but the Buddhist Mahavira in the breakfields do not do that. Uh, uh, I mean, uh, uh, you, uh, uh, how, how should I put it on? You, you, uh, you became monk in Mahavihara, am I right? Uh, no, it's monk. No, it's yes. monk in Mahavihara. Uh, Mahavihara, okay. Okay, so I, I see it, okay. So let's take a look. Huh? Uh, basically, uh, the precept regards are uh, possessed the money. Huh? Sometimes there's some contradiction with the practical life. Uh -huh. The reason is nowadays, everybody needs the money, okay? Even though you buy the handphone, you need the money, okay? Uh, or you want to go to pilgrimage, you need the money. So money is quite essential and quite basic nowadays. Uh, for those who observe the precept, not possess the money, they have to appoint a kapiya, a third party. Uh, so uh, every time once they get the money, they wouldn't they wouldn't go to touch even they go even they don't go to touch the money, but they uh, they they, uh, they will ask the donor uh, to do, uh, to to pass the money to the kapiya, okay? And the monk themselves, uh, we will conduct a procedure uh, and admit to the third party that uh, to admit to the third party that the possession of the money belongs uh, to to the party uh, to to other people, but I have rights to use the money. So this is the uh, uh, this is a procedure which will make the money from uh, inallowable to allowable. You see what I mean? Uh, they just try to I mean uh, 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 they try to avoid to process the money, but they have the right to use the money by going through this procedure. Understand, Sally? Yeah. Yeah. Uh, so uh, I mean that's the procedure uh, But uh, some monks uh, they prefer keep money by themselves, so they handle money lah. Uh, so, um, so the only thing I can we can believe that like, why, uh, why, uh, why in Buddha time, how huh, they no need to use the money is because the background they must be in the jungle and must be in ag agricultural area so that they totally without touching the money then they can survive. I mean, uh, normally, huh? quite right. Not nowadays, quite impossible. Even though a piece of newspaper, you still have to use the money. Uh, uh, it's quite hard to believe. Huh? How come they can survive without the money in Buddha time or so? Huh? Okay, let's take a look. Huh? So according here, so uh, okay, uh, okay. Here it talk about the definition as a sangha. Sangha, sangha means what? The big shoe means what? Who lives by begging for arms? Uh, this is the quite proper and ancient the definition as a big shoe. They have the arms around, okay? Uh, well, uh, uh, especially the forest monk in Thailand, uh, they, they do practice the arms around. Uh, usually, uh, basically, uh, uh, some they will walk quite far away uh, just for the arms around, okay? Uh, whereas in city, uh, they will practice the arms around, maybe just in special occasion, and like you say, uh, after the notion program, they will conduct, uh, and some they will conduct internal arms around, uh, meaning to say that all the devotees, they come to the temple, they, they bring the food and ready to serve the monk. Uh, so the, the, the monk, I mean uh, uh, ritually, they will arms around within the temple uh, uh, just to get a feel uh, uh, of the Buddha time, uh, uh, just uh, to, in order to fit the definition as a big shoe, as something like that. Uh. 
So here, uh, usually we don't, I, I don't arms around. You all just uh, offer me and bring me out to the restaurant and then just offer me. <laughs> so easy and simple way. Ah, because, uh, okay, let's say uh, I really have to follow uh, the orthodox way, I meaning to say that you have to cook every day uh, two meals for me and bring to my temple, you see. Oh, so in Terawadin, you must have a supportive group. Uh, you must get a group of people. And most, also, we have a kitchen group uh, in order to they can accommodate to each other. Ah, because sometimes um, people they are busy, uh, especially in city, uh, they can hardly bring you the food all the time. So you must be, have a kitchen uh, ready for it. You see or not, if I'm alone, uh, I do this uh, a lot of trouble for me, you see. Uh, if I cook easy, I just cook, 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 and uh, then it finished already. Ah, or I think you prefer to bring me out and then pay for the restaurant, am I right? Rather you go to cook everything, then just come here and bring to me. Am I right? Uh, I think you, for you, I uh, So I mean, uh, in a city life, uh, it makes things different already. Uh. I, rem I remember there's one man uh, who stayed in America, you see. He said, oh, in New York City, the people are so busy. What, can, what, what they can do is they will buy a lot of groceries and keep inside your fridge. And they say, okay, bye-bye, master. So I leave everything for you. Everything is in the grocery. So you have to, in the fridge, uh, so you have to, to get out. Now. I'm busy in working already. Well, it happened in New York. I mean, especially the extremely big city. Uh, the people don't have really time to do all this type of thing, uh, like in Kampong already. Okay. Uh, okay. So, so anyway, uh, now, uh, I mean, recently, I mean, uh, previously, uh, uh, Sally uh, uh, goes up ballet. Uh, so he come and cook. <laughs> but we all eat together like, like a family concert. It's not, it's, I mean, uh, it is also offered, it is also the concept of offering. Uh, but in Mahayana, basically, in order to build the relationship, we eat together in one table. Uh, uh, but uh, why, uh, according to Vinaya, uh, the way you see, we don't eat together. Uh, the reason is due to the, uh, the, the perception of offering. Uh. Okay, in our ancient rules, uh, for example, okay, this is one bowl of the rice, you see, okay. So Sally, uh, once you offer to me, okay, uh, the rice belongs to me, okay. Uh, so once I cannot finish, I will just uh, give away the rice back uh, to Sally you, all right. Then Sally you can handle uh, wherever, the way wherever you like, okay. Uh, why? Because uh, in our engine room, uh, we, we cannot stay overnight with, uh, with, the, with any food. We don't stay overnight with any food. The food, the definition means the rice, the vegetable, uh, the fruits, all these things. Okay, we don't stay overnight. I mean, uh, according to the ancient rules. Uh, but if let's say now, I have to stay together with the food. What? The fridge is in the downstairs, right? <laughs> all, all the food is there. So you see, uh, in order to adapt in the city life, uh, so uh, basically we ignore these rules. Uh, so we all can eat together. Uh, because I don't have the precept that it belongs to me, that I give it up, give it away to all of you. Why? Because I don't keep any food. Uh, basically, for Terawadin, the most orthodox one, they don't keep any food. So once they don't keep any food, they just want to stay away with the food. So once you offer to them, the things belongs to them, you cannot take it. If you take the food, it's considered stealing away. Uh, so after offer, once they feel it, uh, once they eat the food and feel enough, they will just give away back to all the laymen, then you handle it. Uh, if they observe the rule in this way, basically, you won't see any fridge in the temple. No fridge, no cupboard to keep the food, no. Uh, but what you can see is just the medicine only. Uh, or, uh, the, I mean, uh, the, the defined medicine and specific medicine only in the temple only. You know what I mean? Uh, so, I mean, this is the most orthodox way. Uh, uh, I think Elena got so frightened. Huh? Luckily, you didn't, uh, you didn't become a nun. Huh? Whoa. So many of these type of rules and regulations, you see. Uh, okay. Uh, Mr. Lim, uh, just now you disappeared again. Uh, do you miss out any point? You don't. I also don't know what, what, what point you, 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 you talk about. Oh, no, no. Uh, do you, uh, can you keep on listening uh, uh, what I was talking just now? Uh, the period of time was cut off. Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. We don't see you also. Uh, you lost in Nibana again. Huh? You used to <laughs> lost in Nibana. <laughs> Uh, and and freeze and freeze uh, 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 and freeze at the same time. Huh? Okay, huh? So let's continue. Huh? Okay. Uh, so uh, okay. And and 
in the next paragraph, it mentioned after leaving home, one has to receive the Stramanera precept first and then receive the Pikul precept. Yeah, uh, basically, this is a more, more common practice. Uh, huh? uh, you receive the Stramanera, then you become a Pikul. Okay, huh? why there's a Stram Stramanera precept? Okay, uh, the reason is that during Buddha time, okay, uh, uh, some of the di disciples die. Huh? Okay, disease. Okay, disease. And uh, they leave the children for them. Okay, and even uh, Shakyamuni Buddha himself, he got one one child. Okay, the name is uh, um, what's the name of uh, Rahula? Yes, Rahula. Okay, since Rahula haven't reached the age of twenty one, he has to become a Stramanera in the first place. Meaning to say that Stramanera is for those who haven't reached twenty one years old. They become a Stramanera as a probationary period. Once they reach 21, they will be ordained as a monk. Okay, huh? But I think this is a better better stage huh? from Stramanera to the Bhikkhu uh, because uh, without probational period, you don't know whether it's suitable to you or not. Like Mr. Leong, huh? you see, after you try out, you found that it's not, not suitable to you, and then you can become a layman. Huh? More easy for you. Huh? Okay. Well, Mr. Leong, okay. Uh, well, the moment you become a Stramanera, okay, uh, uh, um, what do they say about your asset? Lah? The money, the asset you possess? Uh, at that time, uh, we we are staying in the temple for the for the eight precepts, uh, eight pre uh, ten precepts lah. So we are not handle cash, anything, or handphone, or whatever. We have to empty our pockets and everything. You mean within the temple? Lah, huh? Uh, I mean, uh, if the possession which is in your house, they don't bother, lah, right? They don't bother, lah, huh? uh, yeah, yeah, because very hard because uh, once you disrupt again, you go, uh, then all the asset, you, let's say you already change the name of what is very troublesome, you see? You see what I mean? Because you just, you are just temporary uh, for, for renunciation, right? Temporary only, right? At that time? Short term. Uh, both of you. Temporary. Oh, temporary, lah, okay. Lah. But anyway, but uh, that's what 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 uh, what people doing uh, uh, temporary uh, knowledge program. So at that particular time, you just give up or uh, give up whatever asset you have. Uh, uh. Okay, next we take a look. Uh. Okay, uh, Mr. Leong, according your experience in Buddhist Mahavihara, it is a mandatory for being Stramanera. Uh, for being a Stramanera before Pikuship, it is a mandatory. Actually, uh, I I joined the uh, what you call some program only, not uh not to follow uh as a trainee. Uh, trainee monk. Uh, yeah, Just yeah, yeah. Observe the monastic life. So you oh, don't know whether they will adopt a mandatory. A Stramanera or not, you don't know lah. Huh? Uh, never mind, never mind. Domestic life, yeah. Uh, basically, it depends on the temple or so lah. Huh? Some temple they will be very strict in Stramanera. They don't bother your age. You must be fulfill the requirement for maybe particular years uh, as a Stramanera. Uh, uh, for I mean not uh, for probationer lah. Huh? Uh, for probation period. Huh? I'm not joining the order of the Sangha. We're uh, just experiencing our life. Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. So now we go to the next paragraph, the fifth category. Huh? Okay, who's turn? Elena, yes, Elena, please. The fifth category. Huh? The fifth category, the Siksamana Pizats were for women in the rank above the Sramanamika and below the Bikusuni. The Siksamanas. The term means women studying the Dharma were to receive and keep the six Dharma precepts for two years. Initially, when the Buddha allowed women to join the Sangha, there was only the rank of, of Bhikkhu Sunni. Later, the Sramanarika rank was added, and still later, the Siksamana. This becomes the three ranks for monastic women. The reason for these additions was that there were some women who had been married before leaving home and were already pregnant. After they received the Bhikkhu Sunni precepts, their pregnancy became 
became visible and they gave birth. This led to ridicule and suspicion among ordinary people who became the Sangha. So the Buddha established the Sikhsamana rank for all married women above the age of 10. Indian, Indian women were married as young girls and for unmarried women over 18. After taking the Sramanarika precepts, they received the six Dharma precepts for six years. For two, two years. For two years. Mm -hmm. oh, sorry, for two years, yeah. Although at the beginning, the purpose was to eliminate the possibility of pregnancy, later it became a very rigorous stage of testing. If this woman broke the six Dharma precepts within the two years, they could not take the Bhikkhusuni precepts. Instead, they could take the six precepts for another two years. And then if they kept the precepts strictly, advance to the Bhikkhusuni precepts. These rules were much more strict than the Sramanarika precepts. Okay, thank you so much. Six Saman. Thumb up, please. Once you finish, uh. Finish. Okay. So now we talk about Sikha Mana. Okay, uh, sometimes they pronounce as Sikha Mana or Sikha Mana. Well, basically, Sikha Mana is the stage for women in between Sramanareki and the Bikuni. They are in the middle. Uh, and these stages, why it is necessary? The reason is uh, some women, some women, okay, maybe they just marry, okay, but they regret. Then they want to become a nun, okay. But during the, I mean, during their, their I mean, uh, 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 yeah, uh, uh, I mean, uh, uh, once uh, they are already in the monastic order, then the pregnancy become obvious. You see, that become very embarrassing, right? And the late men, they may uh, will be, uh, 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 they may suspicious, and they will write down some uh, sarcastic remark. In order to avoid all this, uh, we need a sekamana. Okay, and, and, and it takes about two years to observe that uh, the married woman and make sure that they would, they, there will be no more pregnancy uh, uh, before they uh, formally join the monastic order. So that is the purpose uh, uh, for the Sikha Mana, uh, uh, in the, I mean, originally. Uh, okay. But later, okay, shall I know uh, basically uh, how long, I, I mean, uh, uh, I mean uh, it takes how long uh, for a woman to realize uh, uh, the pregnancy, ha, usually, ha. Oh, maybe I asked the wrong question. <laughs> okay, okay. <laughs> uh, yeah. okay I you. Yeah, because but normally, before, normally yeah, it's okay. about three months, la. Three months, ah, uh, three months. Uh, so basically, la. Okay, meaning to say, if 
after the after Mary, okay, and then uh, within the three months, uh, maybe uh, the woman regrets, okay, and he and he start. Uh, I mean, he wants he wish to renounce, okay. So meaning to say that within the three months, without the observation, uh, I mean the awkward situation may occur. Am I right? Three months, uh, uh, And once uh, you see, okay, uh, once uh, the woman got the pregnant, uh, uh, she has to disrupt. If she doesn't disrupt, uh, that will be embarrassing. Uh, because uh, how come a nun now uh, with pregnancy, right? Uh, people, uh, people will kiss uh, the situation. Okay, uh, okay. So this is uh, This is the origin. Originally, it is in this situation, but later on they make it mandatory and even more rigorous, more strict uh, for the sikamana. Uh, uh, you have to pass by the sikamana stages in order to become a tukuni. Uh, okay, class about the. Uh, 320, 40, or 200, or uh, that's the number only. Uh. Basically, for all the Vinaya, uh, there must be two purposes only. One is to get rid of the greedy, hunger, and stupidity so that you can progress to somebody. Secondly, it's, it's to build up the confidence, I mean, uh, among the society. Uh. That's the two purposes for all the Vinaya. Okay, uh. But of course, uh, some of the Vinaya is out of date. Uh, it doesn't really. I mean, uh, it doesn't really make sense in nowadays. Uh, okay, uh, so, okay. For example, in ancient time, okay, the clothes and also the bow uh, is very precious. So according uh, the rule at that time, they said you cannot possess more than one bow. Uh, you just can have one bow. Only. But nowadays, uh, oh, people they don't want the bow anymore because uh, wherever they go, uh, they can get one bow. And and, and uh, once they go to another ceremony. Uh, they get another bow and sometimes they got too much much bow they make a bow as a vase you know so they plant some flower on the bow you see the reason is there's got too many bow already uh but nowadays uh, you have to change the rules that you cannot have too much handful now especially the luxury one that will be more up to date like how uh, people can i mean uh, i mean you can show the extravagance uh, by having too much especially luxury handful instead of too much bowl. Uh, not people don't want to bowl anymore. Uh, and even though the clothes are uh, not too much, ex too excessively already. Uh, people have got, because uh, nowadays it's very easy to get the clothes uh, compared with the Buddha type. So you have to change it. Uh, even though maybe uh, you change the rules that don't drive a luxury car, uh, just, a, uh, just a simple car, uh, that will be fine already. Anyway, I think in Buddhist, Maha Buddhist Vihara, all the monks are prohibited from driving, right? Mr. Lee? Oh, they don't drive. They, ha they haven't opened to the stage to drive yet, not yet. A lot of lay people offering transport to them. Why they get so... Uh, uh, where, do they get, uh, where, where do they get so much uh, free people to drive for them? Where do they get the free people to drive for them? <laughs> Again, oh, yeah. again. <laughs> they, they, they no, see, oh, they have gone to the Nibbana again. <laughs> no, it's, a, it's a freezing process, not Nibbana, it's a freezing process. <laughs> okay, hey, but see, for you, I'm not sure, God, this is a problem. Uh. Your image, your, your not voice, then the, the sound. Uh. Uh, my sound system is not that good. No, now, now, uh, now. Uh, now only earlier was okay, but now no. Okay, never mind. I do a little bit change. Yeah, Mr. Leung, maybe you can try to answer us. <laughs> the thing is, uh, a lot of devotees and lay people go to the temple every day, especially during uh for puja and things like that. Huh? <laughs> okay, but then, Sally. Still got. Still got. The sound is not that good, lah. Huh? Mm. Not that good, lah. No, huh? it's, it's okay, but then got that back background, the echo. Uh, the echo. Uh, the echo from somewhere, uh, not from mine, lah. Uh. It's from the other, huh? Okay. So <laughs> maybe yeah, you see. Okay, they are freezes again. Ah, uh, they freeze again. You see, uh, basically, there must be enough. Uh, they are back. They are back. They must They're be back. Uh -huh. Yeah, basically. They are back. Mr. Liang, you when you are back, you raise your hand. <laughs> <laughs> Which one's the real one? Which one's the false one? Huh? So many <laughs> if you want the layman to drive for you, there must be enough retiring people in the temple. Lah. Am I right, Mr. Leo? 
there must be enough retiring people in the temple so that they can drive for you. Not necessary, not necessary. Because it sometimes depends on the timing, the day, the timing and whatnot. Oh, you mean the layman sometimes can make appointment, okay, once they are free and give you a ride, lah. something like that, right? Oh, the freeze again. Ah, yeah. <laughs> I have not disappeared yet. Okay. Okay, okay ready. Ah, okay. <laughs> uh, so, Mister Long, you mean as long as long as they make appointment with the layman, okay, uh, they will arrange the time to give them a ride, lah. Am I right? Uh, yeah, they will go to the temple and fetch them. Yes. Uh, but of course, lah, if the monk, uh, the way I see, some temple, the monk, they will study some business study or what uh, in particular college they have to drive by themselves la, or get a public transport la. if you go so regular where we get i mean uh, you must get the retiring people and uh, so that they are afford to drive you for regularly right in the regularity right if they're taking course course longer, then that one i do not know how they how their transport is uh i should be public transport la, because so far we uh, we don't see a Terawadi monk to drive here like in Malaysia. We haven't started to see them. Yes, I see a lot. <laughs> not really. Yeah. Terawadi, no? Mahayana. Oh, no, Mahayana. I mean Terawada. Huh? Ter Mahayana is, you used to it already. Huh? If, a, if, a, if a Mahayana monk, they don't know how to drive, uh, this is abnormal already. Huh? <laughs> abnormal. Uh, it is abnormal to see a, Terawad, uh, a Mahayana monk cannot drive. Huh? Okay, so uh, let's take a look. Uh. So that is the six precepts for another two years. Uh. Let's see first. Okay, I think I I would like to stop here. Okay, uh, one hour ten minutes. Okay, okay, one more paragraph. Okay, uh, one more paragraph, please. So, uh, Mr. Leong, please read uh, some person, uh, please. Persons are of unstable temper and give up easily so before women were allowed to become bhikshunis they have to pass this rigorous test among catholics nuns are questioned three times before leaving home this is much stricter than for men such a system probably was never propagated in china and possibly was not respected in india either this is because the Samanera and Samanarika precepts, as well as the Bishus and Bishuni precepts, were generally similar, although there are some differences among different schools. The main exception is the six years of the six Dharma precepts, which different schools handle differently. The ten Recitations, precepts of the old <coughs> Sawatiwadian school and the four divisions of precepts of the Dharma Upa school, both of which are described as the six precepts, are not entirely the same. The Vishuni Vinaya of the new Sawatiwadian schools describes two years of the six precepts and the six associated behaviors. Two sets of six precepts. The Sangika Vinaya of the Maha Sangika schools describes two years of the associated behaviors of the 18 events, three sets. The ancient descriptions of the requirement for the two years of the six precepts are the same, but the content of the precepts differ. Such different customs are exist, existed. One can imagine because the ancient Sikha Mana system had not been strictly followed out for a very long time. Okay, thank you so much.
Help once you finish selling. Yeah, okay, help. Okay, let's take a look in this paragraph. You see, uh, the reason why the bhikkhuni have to pass the rigorous test is due to unstable in temperamental. Uh, uh, this is the reason why they have to undergo the strict of the rules. Uh. Uh, well, according to the Vinaya, monk can become a uh, monk are able to uh, eligible to ordain for six time, uh, but for women, just only eligible for ordination for once in the once in the lifetime only. Okay, uh. Well, this is stated clearly uh, in our Vinaya text. Okay, uh. but in Taiwan, uh, because uh, uh, most of the bhikkhuni in Taiwan, they are they are uh, I mean uh, they are highly educated. They challenge the rule and regulation in the Vinaya. <laughs> it happened in Taiwan only. Well, I think maybe Elena wish to challenge. Okay, so see one day when you become a nun, you can challenge and fight for the rights of the <laughs> Too old already. <laughs> Too old already. <laughs> so we let the young young woman to fight for the equality. Well, this is the orthodox text. Same as I said, the, the most orthodox people they will try to follow everything stated in the Textbooks, okay. Uh, the ancient textbook thousand years ago laid out the rule. Huh? So the modern nana they will see things differently. Huh? Uh, they will come out idea that oh, they, I mean, uh, uh, they will suspect uh, uh, maybe the shawanism are uh, in the Piku ship. Uh, I mean, uh, uh, there will be some shawanism uh, which is popular in the Piku in the Piku, and they try to control. Uh, I mean, uh, the uh, the authority, uh, the authority, and and con uh, and. And they try to control over the woman, uh, uh, so they will lay down all this type of rule. Uh. Well, anyway, uh, since you all you don't wish to become a nun, so we just ignore it. Uh, okay. Okay, besides, let's take a look to this. Uh, okay. Well, there's a few of the school names, Sawastivardin, Damakopta, and Mahasamgika. Uh, they, they will be no more, they, they are no more available nowadays. Uh. Nowadays, uh, uh, I mean, the school uh, which is common and popular is the Tawatimsa, which is in Terawada. And in the Mahayana, you see, uh, I mean, the way you see our Mahayana, mostly uh, maybe in, uh, we, are, we are under the heritage of uh, Mahasamgika. Uh. Let's take a look. Uh. Uh, school of Buddhism. Okay. Uh, so this is the diagram. Okay. So let's take a look. Mm. Okay, this is the Sangha. This is the Mahasam Giga, huh? which we just now we mentioned about the Mahasam Giga. And uh, Mahayana is suspected originated from Mahasam Giga. Maybe it just partly inherited the teaching, not all. Okay. So let's take a look. This is a Theravada. Uh, which is common nowadays in Myanmar, Thailand, and also in Cambodia. All right. And uh, just now it mentioned Dharma Gupta. Okay, Dharma Gupta is under this. Let's take a look. Uh, uh, yeah, it's under here. Uh, okay, uh, it mentioned Dharma Gupta and the Savastivada. Here is the Savastivada. Let's take a look. So this is the Savastivada. All right. Dharma Gupta is under here. It's somewhere here, Dharma Gupta. Okay, but no more already. Tamakopta and Savasti Mawada, no more already. Huh? Uh, but we just go to the, we just take a look to the conclusion. Huh? The ancient Sikamana system had not been strictly carried out for a very long time. So that is the conclusion in Nila. Okay. <laughs> I think it's already enough huh? because uh, we don't even become a nun. That is good already. Huh? Okay, class, we start our class here. Okay. So later on, Elena, please call all of them to do some recapitulation. Okay, uh, Sally and Elena, you don't aim, you don't have any intention for become none anymore, right? No la, uh, no intention now. Uh. Uh, yes, Sally, on the mic once you speak. I say we are too old already. <laughs> too old already, uh, too too old to be uh too. Not because uh, because you have an age age limit, Emma. Uh, yes, yeah. yes. Okay, huh? maybe uh, uh, yeah, uh, maybe if you go to 
you may try to experience the eight precept lah, huh? eight precept. There's no limit. Eight. There's no age limit for eight precept lah, huh? uh, yeah. So you right. to ask Elena and go together. Elena, you prefer Theravada or Mahayana styles of eight precept lah? Huh? Mahayana. Uh, uh, yeah. So next time you must be reincarnated to the Chinese stream lah. Huh? Don't go to the English stream lah. Huh? Don't want to be <laughs> Ah, uh, yeah, to, to, to understand all the texts, you see, huh? the classical text. Okay. okay, so just do the recapitulation, then 4 30, we will meet to each other. But, Elena, if possible, please join the session until the end of the interview. Huh? Okay, huh? So, so you can learn more things also during the interview. Huh? Okay, huh? But if let's say all your chakra closed down, so you just better have a rest, huh? Huh? Elena, huh? if all the chakra closed down. Okay, huh? okay please, palms together. Huh? I wish to inculcate. I wish to inculcate.